Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by the Unshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Yesterday, uh, that the the Sydney uh, Black Lives Matter rally, which uh, was uh, uh, organised by a, a Trotskyist Marxist uh, Paddy Gibson of uh, Solidarity, uh, his uh, rally was deemed unlawful by both New South Wales Supreme Court and Court of Appeal. A, a Paddy Gibson was uh, arrested. Uh, at the at the the rally, four thousand people said they were going to attend. Only twenty ended up uh, uh, showing up here. And as this meme said, uh, uh, Paddy Gibson ended up in the the back of the the, the paddy wagon here. Uh, so I'd like to to introduce uh, my audience to Josephine Cashman, who's worked in uh, Aboriginal affairs and welfare for many years, including sitting on government advisory panels, but uh, dissenting views uh, with the Aboriginal grievance industry, as they are no one particularly speaking out uh, uh, about uh, Bruce Pascoe's rewriting of ancient Aboriginal history with his Dark Emu book, as seeing the activists and media uh, do their best to destroy uh, her career and assassinate her character, but she has been uh, uh, undeterred. Uh, you may have seen her uh, on the, the, the Bolt Report and uh, Chris Smith and, and Friends. She's uh, been part of, uh, uh, what would you call it, a uh, local campaign to, to urge uh, uh, regular uh, Aboriginal people to uh, uh, resist the agenda and lure of uh, Black Lives Matter. Uh, I think what is it you you could call it uh, BLM exit. Yeah, well, it was interesting because I was talking to one of them who's exited young. Call him a young fellow, but it's around my age. But anyway, um, and he's calling it ALM. He said all lives matter, so they think they're going from BLM to ALM. And of course, uh, with the 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 BLM uh, 2.0, as I refer to it, which uh, was triggered by the the death of of uh, African American man George Floyd at the uh, uh, after uh, an encounter with the Minneapolis uh, Police Department, with that officer putting the 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 knee on the throat and uh, we saw a black lives matter 2.0 where we saw riots and destruction in the US uh, at the uh, it being imported into Australia, which I think it was uh, Tim Blair who first correctly pointed out, aren't these type of activists, aren't they against the Americanization of our culture, yet they're importing a, a movement from the US and also applying it to a different race and a, a, separate, a, se a separate set of, of local grievances. Well, yes, and unfortunately for Australians and original Aussies, as we'll call them, um, we, the Marxists, this is a realisation for me, really, Marxism and the communists have actually infiltrated Aboriginal affairs and controlled it for the last 43 years. And um, I think... Although I think, as you've rightly pointed out in some of your articles, uh, there is not the majority are Aboriginal. The majority, and as I've found out from the uh, BLM exit person I spoke to recently, are actually well-to-do university students. And um, they do, unfortunately, probably a lot of them are brainwashed and they've got an agenda. I think it was on clear display with the the, the rioting and looting that was uh, occurring uh, in the the US uh, af uh, after after uh, George Floyd's uh, death. They uh, it didn't matter to them that they were uh, destroying black owned businesses or people who were were on their their side, and they even murdered a a, a retired uh, black police chief. And this is what I was saying to people: it's not uh, about a, a promoting Black Lives Matter message. It's about a, a communist agenda, and they uh, uh, the the Black Lives Matter leadership uh, indirectly were, uh, uh, were 
teaming up with, as I, as I call them, their, their white counterpart, uh, Antifa, which is they're the ones who've been setting uh, uh, Portland uh, ablaze for, for many many uh, nights now and also set up uh, CHAZ, uh, that uh, autonomous or CHOP, what it was, autonomous area in yeah. Seattle as well. So you're absolutely uh, right. And uh, it, uh, I know that you've been uh, on a on a journey of uh, discovery at it at its root. These uh, a identitarian Black Lives Matter uh, movements, racial grievance industries at the root. It's promoting a communist agenda. Well, yeah, and where their weaknesses are, which is very interesting. One, I mean, I was telling you um, when I spoke to you before, I left. An Aboriginal community on the far south coast of New South Wales and I'd actually lived on the Aboriginal community which was the first annexed Aboriginal reserve in 1890 and when I was there it was very hard to get the police to come to the community and at this time believe it or not I mean this was 20 years ago but houses were being firebombed and we couldn't get the police in and um, I think you know the Aboriginal liaison officer organized a fight between people when really statements should have been taken. And then I figured out, hey, most of these people, unfortunately, have been abused as the children. And a lot of good people too, but it was, it, it, for me, it was very clear in my early 20s that there was a double standard in the application of law. So I practically spent the last 20 years trying to improve access to justice and the law and order to be applied. So really, Black Lives Matter is poles apart from what the real issues are here. The real issues are, um, at the moment, um, it's actually law and order. And when there's been a crime commission report, which took eight years to complete, John Howard commissioned it. And it clearly says that abuse of power, which is, which appears to me to be a common thread with these cabal communist sort of infiltrators, abuse of power and organised crime have absolutely infiltrated these communities. But the problem is, as you may find out, and we will, I'm sure, because we're uncovering them, many of these people who have the decision making both in terms of government and in the community aren't Aboriginal and it's completely disconnected to the ground. So the great news is for Australia, and I think it's reflected in the low numbers, that Aboriginal people aren't stupid, but they haven't had a voice. And the people who are up there do not represent them. They've been told, like I've spoke to ones who are actually brainwashed and they go on about sovereignty and all this and that. It doesn't take long to unpick it because they actually don't, uh, they're more conservative in nature and actually these people don't understand them. They haven't bothered and they're actually, they're real snobs. Though when you get into sort of a, a questioning whether uh, some of these activists uh, are, are Aboriginal, it brings up uh, memories of the the the, the Bolt uh, decision, what well, was it, uh, eight or, or nine years ago? Uh, now, when he wrote that uh, column, it's it's hip to be black, and he was taken to to court by a, a coalition of uh, 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 those in the the Aboriginal industry, and he lost that case in the the federal court, breaching 18C of the the Racial uh, Discrimination Act, which has had quite a chilling effect on on, on that sort of uh, on those sorts of discussions, which you which you just yeah. raised there. This, I mean, so I was on Tony Abbott's Prime Minister's Advisory Council. He launched a book of a victim when I was a prosecutor called Lani's Story. He got one of the highest convictions for a living victim of um, brutal attack by her partner, right? But the police didn't actually execute the warrant for him for four and a half years. And he was in and out of jail 44 times. He was arrested 44 times within that period for offences like having a shorn off shotgun. And the police didn't execute the warrant for the sexual assault. So these these places can become sort of cr where people don't have, they give up on democracy because it's not protecting them. 
So back to your, um, I might need you to just remind me of your question. I'm sorry. I sort of got caught in that train of thought. But um, I'll, 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 I'll move on to, uh, you're mentioning the... I just forgot what it was because I got too caught up in answering it. Yep. So you, you talk about the, the, the law not being applied equally in uh, Aboriginal communities or areas of high Aboriginal... Uh, po uh, pop yeah. population where some of the uh, 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 where where there is a uh, uh, crime that needs to be investigated uh, and uh, justice needs to be served you see over in the the, the US where it's, it's only it's only with this whole defund uh, the police movement and Minneapolis where George Floyd uh, died uh, uh, with the the uh, the city council vowing to disband the police you've seen a rise in crime in crime and so you see with this this demonization of the uh, the police whether it's a a, a for a racially charged reasons or because of racism accusations it's you uh, you betray the the victims of crime and also create more victims of crime as well definitely and it becomes people give up on democracy but back to you now i know what i was going to say back to your point with andrew bolt i think it has had a chill effect i think it's been a real back step for our country actually and the thing is it is only protecting um the people in the minority and i honestly believe that since Gough Whitlam was in power and he decided to take over Aboriginal affairs, which isn't really the Commonwealth's responsibility, but I imagine, I've been told at that time, there were serious issues in some of these communities, sewage, water, housing, etc. But seriously, it's been funded for 43 years, but it's funded to fail. It's funded to fail. And when I today even i spoke to an aboriginal woman and she's like sovereign to this we've got to go to the un and all this i'm like seriously after all these native title things go through and i, I remind you paul keating and six aboriginal people many of them you would know associated with this sort of extreme left negotiated the native title act which really gives aboriginal people no rights so they feel like there's things that have been you know, un, unsolved when really I said to her, Australian people have been paying double the money. But the thing is, because this Aboriginal thing has become an untouchable domain and couple that with the, 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 the high rates of violence we know about, the um, organised crime, the abuse of power, people don't feel safe to speak up. And in a way, after they came after me, like boom, train, I thought, no, you're not going to get me because I, my, my thing is I couldn't live with myself if I didn't stand up to this because there are children and women and men who are living um, in um, socialist third world conditions and they shouldn't be. And they're not dumb people and that's how the socialists treat them, like children. They're always talking on behalf of them like Patty, putrid Patty I call him. <laughs> and, you know, um, he also tried to bully someone who um, spoke to me. And it just actually ended up at the same time. And he rang me and he said, these people are absolutely shocking. And putrid Patty um, tries to bully and intimidate. And that's how they use it. And because they're all interconnected, particularly in the university sector, in the arts world, if one speaks up against it, they suffer huge ramifications in terms of their ability to get a, a job and, and because they've been cut off from mainstream Australia, don't have those business networks, etc. Because uh, he's a, a university lecturer, uh, Paddy Gibson, uh, as well as a, a lifelong uh, Marxist Trotskyist activist at uh, UTS, University of Technology, Sydney. Disgusting. And as you've pointed out, the G20 rights, uh, 2008, is that correct? 2006, there were the, all those children who were arrested. And do you want someone, like we've got Aboriginal children for the first time in their life, probably first generation, 
because they provide some accommodation for students generally, but they incentivize it, right? Coming to these universities and then being spoken to by him. I mean, I listened to his stuff on the intervention. It's absolutely conspiracy theory. Now, I'm, I'm going to say something not politically correct. If he was a Muslim, if he was brown, if he had different robes on, he'd be in jail, in my view. Patty Gibson. I, I looked at that. I looked at a recent thing he said on intervention. He is running us all down, all conspiracy. It just proves, like this is not conspiracy theory. The proof is there. I mean, they are indoctrinating our kids and they hate Australia. And, you know, what I'm saying to Aboriginal people is this is, you've got to actually step up and be a first-class citizen. But the problem is school system is so bad. I watched an ABC report, I put it up on my social media, where they're indoctrinating, they've got a video where they're indoctrinating kids on how bad invasion was. So they're, they're everywhere you're going, they're breeding this hatred um, to Australians and Aboriginal people are actually quite, quite Australians and, you know, um, what ev the same as everybody else wants. That's the, I, I, I think, the most disturbing uh, aspect of the, uh, this uh, Marxist infiltration into the, the Aboriginal community, teaching the, the young to, to hate Australia and to, to hate white people, view them as oppressors as well. And of course, the, the irony is, is that uh, this uh, failed rally, uh, this is Patty Gibson here, and uh, obviously the the, uh, the name uh, Patty or or or, or Patrick, uh, if you if you look up uh, where that name is is most common, but there he, he is him being uh, arrested uh, uh, by the by the police there. So he's he's the apparent leader of of Black Lives Matter. This guy. Yeah, yep. And what what back to the you you know this. UTS. I mean, why is Patty getting a job as a senior lecturer when that job should be really going to someone who has experience in Aboriginal communities who can actually add something for Aboriginal people, like whether they're black, white or brindle, or who can, you know, contribute meaningfully? They don't want to. There's a cabal there. Absolutely. Heather Goodall, who set up the Land Rights Act in New South Wales when the RAND government came in, they kicked off, they had an Aboriginal land trust and they kicked off all these great people, it's run quite well, and they set up this um, land state land rights, uh, state land council, where there was all these little land councils and they're so ineffective and people um, look at that and they think, well, this is the government system and they think, oh, they appoint all these people, you know, well, it's like the white people against us. And I have to point out, no, like, there's people in these places that are, that are interconnected. I mean, how can people get jobs as like pro vice chancellors when they don't even have, you know, ac academic publications which are peer reviewed? This is what's happening. That's what the, the BLM, the uh, person at Winston Sydney, who was trying to get everybody to go into a BLM pledge. And they're ready to get, you know, they want to um, get Aboriginal people upset and emotional, but it's really cruel because um, in Australia, we are not a racist country. And the pure fact that can prove it is over 70% of Aboriginal people marry outside. Yeah, I it's a, it's a well-established uh, fact. And if you look at the, the recent census in, in 2016, the population which identifies as having Aboriginal ancestry uh, has gone up. Yeah, and, you know, there's so many, I mean, I put some stuff up on my social media for people who want to speak up about it. One lady, Tanya Hunter, uh, she was actually, um, four generations have been in, um, in guided care, and she found, she's very, she's very Aboriginal, right? But she found her Aboriginal family and she found this woman who she knew was not Aboriginal. She actually gave up university to pursue her. She went to the US and these people who gave her the scholarship in Australia, which is funded by the Australian government, wouldn't stop 
her going, even though she's got no evidence of being Aboriginal. But Tanya rang up the university, I think it was Berkeley, and got in touch with the African American and Native Indi Native um, Americans, and they bowed up. But the, so there's so many Aboriginal people who are trying, and they're writing letters to the government and everything. They know about it um, because. And, 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 you know, in a way it's set up, but my conclusion is they probably, they don't want to solve the problem with Aboriginal health, these people who control it. They actually, I think it's a really bad thing to say. I actually think they'd probably like us all dead because that way they can get access to the land. And as I said, 70% of Australia is going to be under some form of communal title, which when I did a recent talk with Warren Munteen, he confirmed it and he used to be the CEO of Native Title Services in New South Wales. But this land is, this Native Title Act is so crazy because you can't mine the land yourself, right? Mm. You've only got the option to negotiate and people go to these non-stop meetings and they talk about nothing, right? And compare that to Alaska where you've got 13 regional Alaskan corporations, Nixon government set up in 1972. They turned over $9 billion in revenue in 2017. We're paying double the amount for per Aboriginal person and things are deteriorating. So for me, I've come to the conclusion they want it to. They want it to um, bring us out, victimise us as much as possible. And both governments, Liberal and Labor, have, and I think the Labor Party is definitely involved in this, but both of them have um, really said, oh, it's an Aboriginal issue, I'm not going to touch it. I think it goes back to that Andrew um, Bolt case. And my impression of him is he's a wonderful Australian. Um, he's got guts. Thank goodness for people like Andrew Bolt. And I didn't really realise because my motivation from leaving this Aboriginal community and seeing like a child, a baby died, it really affected me, I think, because people were being lazy and not doing their job properly and all sorts of stuff happened. And my focus was sort of blinkered. I wanted Aboriginal, I felt if Aboriginal victims got justice, then, you know, they'd feel more a part of Australia. And I just have this sort of think alike. And um, because I stood up against um, PASCO and Aboriginal tribes who were offended asked me to, and also my mum's a real historian and she's been sidelined because of this stuff, the cabal. Um, you know, they just tried to come after me, called me and everything. You know, this has been the best thing I think that's happened to me because I do not want to be around liars. I, I, I just, I, and I've never been in part of their Aboriginal industry. And the other thing was um, before I got kicked off, I actually um, got threatened to be threatened to be kicked off before this in November when I raised some very serious issues of children and killing themselves lots of children and organ and children prostituting themselves in a community, a town where there's a very high Aboriginal population. And um, the person is very well known and was involved with the Uluru statement process. So I asked for an AFP and a crime commission briefing, which I thought was sensible because I don't want that on my conscience, right? Like embedding anything that was, in, you know, I want to make sure the checks and balances are there. And because I know the Crime Commission did the report, they were the best people to brief. And I sent a request to Marcia and she threatened to kick me off then. Marcia so, Langton, yes, you met, you're referring I, to. Letter. I published a letter and I raised this, I, I put in there that it, it was, it's actually connected to the supply of, large supply of ice, right? And child prostitution. Yeah, and then, it's... Yeah, but the thing is, these people raised it with me and I was actually asked to go to that community by Ken and I didn't get paid for doing it or anything. I was trying to help something else. And I have a lot of family there and they had reported it and, um, you know, nothing has happened as a result. And it, it's, it's a crime. It's a, and unfortunately in that community, when people speak up, sometimes their houses get firebombed. And that might be hard for people to understand when we're in Australia, but this is the sort of stuff Aboriginal people face. It is uh, uh, reported in uh, the mainstream media some of the more horrendous acts of um, uh, child 
uh, abuse. There was there was one recently that was uh, reported that happened in in Cape York. But uh, that's just the the ones that the media chooses to to highlight. Obviously, you've got countless uh, examples of of that as well, which. Uh, shocks a lot of lot of us here in the cities that what that's happening in australia that sounds more like something that happens in afghanistan rather than than here and yeah the meanwhile the what well, we call it at the unshackled the aboriginal superstructure rolls on and it's i refer to it as a never-ending reconciliation movement where it's it's always about the the symbolism, uh, whether it be change change the date uh, treaty. Uh, we we have had the what is it the the recognised campaign in the constitution is now turned into the Uluru statement of, of from the heart and the 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 voice to parliament. It's not designed to to end because then obviously the uh, uh, the superstructure stops because it's mis mission accomplished. Well, it's supported by the cabal as well, and the person who I've been told, um, what is it, Mark Lieber, Lieber, Lieber um, he's got a very close connection with Marcia and Noel, and they've had some fluffy pieces in the a AFR recently, that he's definitely like Soros's guy in Australia, and this is, this is a bigger plot, I'm sorry to say. I convinced, because if they wanted to fix it, they would have fixed it, they actually want things to get worse. This change, these all these symbols. Well, that's why you sort of you get led to to wonder because it, people such as us, we we know what needs to be done, but the the politicians, they're they're they're, they're too scared and cowardly about being, being criticised by such people and and the media and, and, and that it's it it's clear that. The policy solutions are there, they're just not pursued. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of blackmail going on with our politicians, money, etc. I mean, it's, 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 it's been documented, like how many spies, Chinese spies do we have in here? 30,000, there's 60,000 in the US, that's the, I've been quoted. I'm definitely aware of some politicians, I know about it, right? Not going to say now, but because it's ammo, right? But I'm definitely aware that We've got, um, we've got, we don't have, we've got some really big, serious issues in Australia right now. And the, the thing is, I think some of these articles are deliberately put there, right, to be broad sweeping, blaming the Aboriginal community, right? I think it's, I think it's a technique. So when that article came out, of course, there is like so many people upset, but unfortunately, this entire an Aboriginal community that happens. But the thing is, it's not precise enough for which I to be helpful, because there are people who they're aware of. Like I'm been in more Kenya, and they and they and they're not just followed this matter. They're actually funding a seven point five million dollar art gallery when the people want to shop, right? By a guy who killed one of the senior women with a butt of his rifle and two children, and it's reported. I mean, I'm a lawyer, I'm not going to say it in, if it's not true. And the women asked me to come because all the pe a lot of these people who have gone to the minister and stuff are all like, you know, dubious backgrounds and bullies and thugs. And they're the ones who get into the government. So when you do an article that is like broad sweeping, that says, oh, it's like other people don't care. But I know that there's people who care so deeply about these issues in community. I mean, there's a lot of very strong Aboriginal Christians, <laughs> despite what they've tried to do, get us, you know, burn the, ch they've burnt churches and everything. Um, but there are a lot of people with, um, a, you know, cultural values, strong moral compass who are, but they don't, they, they, you know, they're finding it difficult to know where to go. And that's what, you know, my foundation, we've been working on um, getting people to have a voice and teaching them that the best way that they can, you know, have a voice is to vote because a lot of Aboriginal people don't vote um, because they don't even see the point of it, which is really sad, and hopefully get more Aboriginal people on the ground to um, meet more non-Aboriginal people because I've seen so much love from the general public and also, 
you know, run for council elections, state elections, and really have, why do we need another voice? We've got the best democracy, one of the best democracies in the world. People go on boats to try to get here, some of them to infiltrate, but some of them legitimate. That's the reality. Uh, coming back to, because uh, we are close to, to, to 9 p.m., I had a late start, uh, so I don't want to go uh, too late, but just bringing it back to uh, the, well, a as I described it, the, the Black Lives Matter uh, Sydney flop, uh, I hope that this can represent a turning point because, well, the fact that I'm down here in Melbourne, we're in our second lockdown and our Black Lives Matter rally had six positive cases, two were connected to, two were residents of those housing towers that had that very hard lockdown. And so because our contact tracing has been proven to be so poor, we don't know whether they contracted the virus there, whether they spread it or what, what sort of that. But the the new south wales government and police made the the right uh decision in i'm not sure what your views are on the the coronavirus lockdown that's that's irrelevant to to this discussion but knowing what happened in in melbourne just basically standing up to uh patty gibson and uh his his marxist buddies that say no we've seen seen what happened in in melbourne we're on high alert here doesn't matter what your your cause is this is a threat to to public safety and he was uh, on a media blitz uh, uh ranting and raving to any media that would listen that this is more important than the the, the coronavirus and uh, we we promise to 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 socially distance and uh, our rally is no no more dangerous than than a shopping shopping center that as you see here when he's being arrested patty gibson his mask uh, slips off there he sees his mouth is right in those uh, police officers' uh, faces there. It did, this whole episode did immense damage to uh, Black Lives Matter movement in Australia, and especially what's, what's happened in Melbourne. It, it a lot of people, it, it, normal people have, ha have, looked at that uh, Black Lives Matter rally in Melbourne and, and what it triggered as the beginning of the, the second wave. That's just the connection that ordinary people have made. So I hope that this represents this, this flop in Sydney, a turning point. Well, yeah, I think, I think they're going down, down, down in numbers. And it's funny because one of the girls in Brisbane, the BLM, she actually contacted me, but I'm actually, I'm working really hard, like hours and hours, and I've got a group of people now online, and we're really bringing out, um, unfortunately, you know, I'm so glad you're there, but we're bringing out all the um, sort of, uh, you know, how they're such lies, really, and um, hypocrites, and, you know, because I've had more than and growing up i mean i've my mum's aboriginal i've been around it you know I'm not you know trying to come lately i've seen these people we're interconnected so i've got an advantage and i think people trust me they don't trust patty gibson like our families are really interconnected and the average aboriginal person i i'm real i've been getting a huge amount of support offline all over the country. I've, I've got so many messages, I can't keep up with them because people are just ready to sort of be rid of these people, whether they know, you know, the words and like stop, I've been saying to people, stop using sovereignty, it's a brainwashing word. But I think they're waiting for, um, the, they're waiting for liberation. And that's why Aboriginal people, and I know that Patty has a few like people who are heavily drugs who ends out to bully people but they are absolutely losing momentum and i'm going to be speaking to some women soon who've been speaking up independently they know something's wrong and also one of them got sexually abused by someone in blm i mean they are just the most rotten thugs with no moral compass at all and i said you know I'm, i've been talking they're told all this stuff and i I said, you know, you don't need these people to talk for you. You can talk for yourself. Like they're treating you like you're a dog. 
And when they get it, I think I think they will, and that's a good, that's the thing, but we have to stay extremely vigilant because these people have plots and subplots in my view. And I think, you know, um, one of the ways that we're really going to fight this in, in insurgents, it's an insurgent, is by the average Aussie and the average Aboriginal Aussie coming together. Because I think in the last 40 years, we've been pulled apart and, you know, all, most of us are mixed. And the Aboriginal philosophical framework is not, is one where, you know, we're not really judgmental um, and we're quite loving and accepting because, you know, in our culture, everything's interconnected and related. And it's actually the land that accepts you or the creator, God, um, on the earth, not um, people. And I think... Uh, it, 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 we really need to pull like this is where I'd like the focus rather than those victims on the ground which seems to come up you know oh they're on welfare they're going to get off welfare well everybody gets the same new start right just forget it just that's that's a game it's a pitting game the real focus is going to be on why is the ABC promoting fake history um, promoting um, and propaganda Right, without without even questioning it, NITV. Most a lot of the people work there. They came after me. Are actually writing for the CPA, Communist Party of Australia, as well. Yeah, they've been behind some of the the Sydney BLM rallies as well. Literally carrying the the communist hammer and sickle flag. Oh my goodness, I'd like to see that. I'll put it up online. I would love to see that. But the thing is, the strain. It's good if like what you're doing is fabulous because I. You know, we've got the numbers in Australia. We've got the numbers. It's just a matter of, and you were quite optimistic about it. I'm not sure, but we've just got to, if we, because the government is failing us, absolutely failing us. And I call um, the minister, oh, I call Tian, Turdy Tian, and I call, sorry, but you know, you've got to have your pet names, and I call the, <laughs> but the thing is, I'm, I'm, highlighting it but why are we letting the abc sbs be the groomers of our kids for goodness sake you know like it's okay to have a different view but i think i think i was looking back on you know sir robert menzies and his push to ban the communist party and i think once we get more out we've really got to look at don't want to curve freedom of speech but they want to destroy us and what's going to happen if you know like I, I don't even know how our laws are working out with the citizens and defend but definitely they want to create chaos they want to destroy our society and from what i've seen of the communist world of the last hundred years i've got to know this researching a million deaths plus i mean like and what are they doing in china now do we don't want that in this country We've got a fight, you know. Well, as the, the people have have referred to, well, the the re lockdown in Melbourne and the first uh, lockdown in Victoria, uh, this is basically the, the the free trial of of communism, where uh, where well, where we're under uh, basic house arrest. Those those residents of the 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 public housing towers, they were under literal house arrest. They weren't allowed to leave for. For, for any reason so was it we've got three weeks to go of this lockdown to uh get our get our freedoms back uh, but yeah i i am uh, optimistic that there there are more uh are more waking up and yeah i'm certainly love to have you back on again soon for because uh, obviously you've you've got lots lots and lots to to say and and certainly i'd love to do another show with you uh, in the in the near future as well thank you so much and it would be really good to map this out because i think like they say from the lightness like darkness comes light and i think like people said gee you're brave but i actually think the more we speak about it the less dangerous these people are it just seems that way so i'm I, I worked for a senior counsel who specialised in defamation, and you know, I've got I'm going to be taking my own case on. But the thing is, you know, this is a very important thing, and I'm so glad that you're there because it seems like you know that recent article with Lydia Thorpe. I wouldn't have known that stuff about mm. her. I just 
credit today and I put it on Twitter and people were like, oh my goodness. I mean, she is, she is, she, I don't think there's any excuse for, for, for going that hard to support a pedophile um, society, like a pedophile support group. They, I don't, just can't see. Uh, Le, Le, uh, Lucas Roses, who, who writes uh, these, these exposés, when I've had him on the show before, he just gets so angry that he's writing these and the, the mainstream media, uh, even, uh, you know, the, the so-called conservatives, they're not mentioning the extremist links of these people when they're, they're, they're so obvious and they even have their, the communist flags at their, at their rallies, whether it be BLM or Extinction Rebellion or climate justice rallies or whatever. It is literally hiding in, in plain sight the real agenda of these people. They're not mentioning it. Is are they worried? Like you know, are they? Uh, is it so much, so much infiltration from communist countries, particularly China? Oh, it's um, the journalists themselves. They're very left uh, these days, and also very scared of the. I mean, if you you look at that, was it a, a Barry Weiss who resigned from the New York Times? Basically, said that Twitter has become the the ultimate editor of the paper and. I would say that's probably the case for a lot of the uh, the news outlets now and the the various other rags online that they just react to and you know what a twitter pylon is like these mainstream media journalists get easily intimidated by it yeah well we've got to start intimidating them the other way because i and i'm going to definitely share these things more because you know uh, with the amount of child abuse, I mean, I just think that most Aboriginal, decent Aboriginal people would be absolutely disgusted. Oh, all of us um, uh, would be disgusted by it. Well, and uh, there's more about her that people have contacted me and she actually blocked me because I mentioned like tyres and I mentioned that all these people became homeless. They got them to sign. Who was this? Lease. Was this Lydia Thorpe blocked you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got them to sign a new lease. And they, all these, and these, with Jeff Clark there, mind you, you know, great Jeff. Yes, yes. Um, and, um, I know all about are, him. All the beans on her more. And she's been part of people who've had power and influence and voice, and they haven't done anything. And it's interesting because I noticed that Larissa Barrett, Harvard, her, and her her stepmother was Harvard too. There was a her stepmother was a fake average. That's 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 you know that's established. And the one who took Bolt to court, right? They she's now trotting around with Pasco and um, Thorpe talking about a national treaty. Now they always want a national treaty or a national void. And I think this is absolutely part of a scheme to try to, you know, undermine um, Australia's um, freehold land title. And then I looked at the CPA policies and it says it. It says it. It says it. It says once we get, we do not want Aboriginal people to have any private property, right? And since the Gorinchy Wave Hill, they've been dominating. That was 1953, I think. Too. They've been dominating, but particularly when Ram came in and, you know, Paul Keating with his dubious contacts as well. But the thing is, um, they are using Aboriginal people, I'm convinced, to plan some sort of court thing with Anna Block Lever advising them. Um, and I've been told by senior people in security as well, security intelligence, because they just went boom on me and I was told that I actually they had a big plot with Pasco. Mm. And if you look at it, you can tell, you can tell because I was seeing things like, you know, so Pasco was saying, oh, you know, they're hiding Aboriginal culture. They're saying it's not sophisticated, right? And Pasco compares Aboriginalism, which isn't a word to communism in his speeches, right? And so the, the average Aussie would have been really pissed off and said, well, you guys invented a stick, right? And seriously, if you think about it, there were no hooved animals and there's a correlation between hooved animals and the wheel and technological development. It's got nothing to do with people's brains. Like we're not into, well, I'm not. These other cabal people are probably into eugenics. But the thing is, that's, that would have created a real race war. So they actually told me I stopped this big, what? And it was literally, I literally had six PR companies on my LinkedIn, more, look at me. And then the next day it was like, you're a Nazi, you're a Nazi, you're this. And you know what? They had all these fake Aboriginal profiles because I know how people speak. And it's not that hard to 
find who their families are because it's a few established. I knew that they were just rotten to the core, but it's so interesting because I actually think that would have been Marbo 2.2 because Pasco, you know, would have said, would have claimed another argument, but it wouldn't have been for the benefit of Aboriginal people. They would have bloody taken it over, mined the hell out of it. That's why, you know, and just pillaged and raped literally and murdered us. And, um, uh, well, I really hope, all I can say is really hope Donald Trump wins. <laughs> Uh, Beaver anti bullying. One of our regular commenters has said, "Tim, this is the uh, uh, this guest is dropping the most red pills of any guest uh, uh, you've had on." So, well, I think I've said that to you uh, privately. But uh, the difference with you is you basically know uh, how the inside works, and when you uh, spill the beans, the the, the beans yeah, are, are pretty spicy, <laughs> to use the analogy. Well, I am a very, I was a very good prosecutor as well, and I was a good defence lawyer, and I like to have, you know, I, to be honest, this is like running a trial for me. I am running a marathon. I am working, uh, you know, like we, this is the thing, Trump didn't have all the money, did he? Like, he didn't have the money, but we can, we can out, we can out with them, because when you're a liar, right, you're a liar and you're full of it and you think you're so cocky, you drop the ball all the time. And they're the crumbs that you've been picking up, right? You've been picking up these crumbs. What we've got to do, I'd love to, you know, I'm happy to work with anyone to map this out so we can expose it and take our country back because they seriously are, like, seditious. I'm worried I don't. I know that the CIA is infiltrated. I have no idea how much we are here, but it's certainly extremely weird how when I wrote to Peter Dutton, right, about Pasco, um, this Paige Taylor is definitely a plant in Australia. She just she's like a PR agent for Wyatt, like unbelievable. She really spun the piece. What happened was she held on to this Dutton letter I gave her. I was very naive. Thought all these journalists in Australia would be okay, and she. He released it and just before that I'd written to the editor, the major editor was on leave and I said, I do not want you to publish the piece. I don't trust you. You've you have you have you have not you've done a few things to me and I do not trust you to write a proper piece. After I told that she published it, but they published it to say that Bruce was fighting the bushfires. It was like a spin, right? But I knew from other people he was filming for that bloody a dark emu series that's the one and that the abc is commissioning they spun it and then they did it like i wanted to set up a nazi type database but actually and i've published the letter online i wrote to um peter dutton is that i wanted to get experts together with elders and the reason why i wanted to do that is i know that elders are hardcore they do not want people who would want someone pretending they're related to them i mean it's like it's really insulting to your heritage and a lot of them are like having health problems they're so stressed about it to be honest i get calls they think because i'm a lawyer i can solve everything and i'm like no i'm humble i've just got to look a lot of things up but the thing is they all I asked Peter Dutton for was uh, elders with with um, experts to talk about the issue, right? Just to talk about the issue because it's obvious that debates. Well, they hammered me, and then I've been writing to a lot of ministers. I haven't even got I haven't I got one response from <laughs> Tian. Yeah, you, you, you you might be on some sort of because I have heard from former politicians that they they're able to filter emails, certain types of emails. Oh, also, you know what else? There's a star chamber. Do you know what the star chamber? Oh, yeah, I know the, the expression, yes. Well, there's a star chamber in the Liberal Party who decide who, where everybody, who the staffers are, right? Where the staffers go. Mm. So, oh, that's, yeah. Um, I don't want to get too... Yeah. too but, the, but anyway, you know that Photius is running New South Wales Liberal Party. That's so what a lot of people have, 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 have speculated. Puppet. He's, and then you've got Don Harwin, who I think's got a huge amount of influence. He's, you know, broke the COVID stuff, and you know. Well, he got uh, out of out, out of out of the fine, yes. But so anyway, you've got it could be the staffers because, but it could also be that they were it was an operational um, decision because they knew what was being planned and they didn't want it to. Follow I up. think uh, my uh, my point of view is that it's just. It's just cowardice 
all, all, all around, both uh, whether it be a Liberal or Labor, and and certainly the political class. Well, they need to need need to need to grow a spine. Uh, I think. Uh, afterwards that was very interesting because they tried to spin that too mm. I basically said about those refugees like the people who were claiming to be aboriginal oh yes this high court case i remember earlier this year after that was very interesting how all these things happened but they basically said it's the government's role to set up a framework and my view is we should get rid of the whole social services sector and have what you have in Alaskans and people can hold their own genealogy and they're like shareholders then. So if they let in these bloody people, that's, you know, that's that's independence, right? But again, elders have been cut out, so I don't want to make any decisions for them. It's disrespectful. And I know how hardcore they'll be getting out the DNA and everything. You know, they think these other One Nation's hardcore, they want to meet some of these elders. But the thing is, um, it was it was just, it's but it's a loophole now, but the High Court basically said, you know, that's a government responsibility. But then these media people saying, oh, the activist high court, blah, blah, blah. But that's not how I read it. But it is an extreme loophole in our country um, where people can say, well, I'm offended I'm Aboriginal. And because people haven't, they've been cut off. And I was telling you where my mum's, where my mum's family is in Taree. There's used to be called Sunrise Station. A farmer gave it actually. I saw my answers, but it was a farmer in the previous talk. And in the 70s, they went up the north coast, these activists, and burnt all the churches. And the people in Taree used to have a combined church service. And um, in another place, a woman from Rockhampton was telling me at Sherberg, they were, the Aboriginal people were literally told they're not allowed to be Christians and they have to completely... Uh, that sounds uh, abhorrent, absolutely uh, abhorrent. So, uh, as I said, I know you've got uh, a lot to say, but uh, I would oh, like to to, to, to end, e e end it now. The, base, the more people know, the more chance we've got to unite. But we've got plenty of time to discuss this. I'm sure as time goes on and both of us put the, the little pieces together. And yep. good on you. Amazing work. I mean, you're the only one. I had no idea about Marcia's links until I stumbled on your articles like a godsend. Well, they've been trying to well beat you into submission since the the end of end of last year since you first uh, well pretty much blew the whistle on on Pasco and we should also credit uh, Quadrant magazine as well for doing a lot of uh, exposés on on Dark Emu as well but uh, you're still standing and and more determined than ever that's what I'm noticing with with activists all around the world they're they're just trying to well that cancel culture as it's called uh, as as it's called uh, uh, pe uh, people are just becoming more determined by it and becoming uncountable and you're, you're definitely one of those uncountables that uh, you won't be going away no, i won't be going away and the thing is it's the light has to be brought on it because australians are suffering and we're a beautiful country and you know we're the one the best country in the world and people are using us because of our mineral resources in my view which is so ironic because these people are meant to be environments <laughs> so they really you know either they're useful the biggest useful idiots going or you know and and how dare people think that they they've got a right to undermine our democracy i mean how isn't this bloody terrorism that's anyway well we should definitely, because uh, we've touched on it briefly tonight, uh, do, uh, uh, do do a whole episode on uh, exposing uh, Dark Emu. But we'll leave it there. Thank you so much, uh, Josephine, for, for coming on. Uh, 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 take care, and uh, I don't need to uh, give you any further uh, encouragement to, to, to be tough. As the saying goes, you're as tough as nails. Oh, thank you. Thank you. But still smiling and still, you know, like you've got to enjoy the, these people are the ones who should be upset and angry and crying. And they're going to be crying because I'm really going to make sure we should make sure a lot. The ones who have wanted to destroy our country are locked up and, and you know, locked up the book thrown at them, proper prosecutions, because they have just been getting away with this way too much and they should be scared. And I said that on my original Bolt thing. I said, you know, I said, you know, I'm in, I'm all cards in, right? You know, all the way. And and the thing is, it's all in the light. So 
you know, they haven't got very many places to move. And actually, I'm hardly any back. I've got a mob and I haven't asked for it on Twitter and they just follow if anyone says anything. And, and these trolls now block us because they can't handle it. Yeah. So they're just weak people. Uh, anyway. Have a, have a good night. We'll speak again soon. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows. And to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.